I'd like to ask you another question about that same period when uh, the going back to 19 or 1870, give or take. Um, I have the impression that there was almost no library or there was no library uh, available to the medical school. Well, the history, the library, if you go down from the very beginning, they started off with a library and they soon had about a thousand volumes, they said. Uh, after a while, they uh, gave it up and I think they started it again. And finally, they decided to abandon it and uh, gave the whole thing to the Chicago Medical Society. And uh, they gave it to them in the same year, you know, the year before, the Chicago fire burned up everything in the loop together with that uh, library. Then there was a long, then there was another hiatus, and finally the Alumni Association decided that the school ought to have a library. And uh, for, uh, for, well, it was some 40 years that the, um, that the medical school and the university never sponsored a library of any kind. It was run by the Alumni Association who sold books. They had a bookstore going and so on. And they, they uh, carried that on for a good number of years. Uh, but, and then after a time, uh, and it was, I've forgotten, 20, 24 years or something like that that they were sponsoring it. Then they turned it back to the medical school and uh, the medical school has continued. But it, uh, until we moved over here, it was a very modest affair. It was said that by the time when we left or when we moved in here, there were perhaps, I don't know, 13 or 15,000 volumes. The number doesn't seem to be too exact. I know that in that period, uh, uh, since I came to the school, there were some times of weeding out of the library when books, including valuable books, were just put on tables out in the hallway for people to uh, run away with. But when we moved over here, and particularly through Dr. Cutter's interest, because he had a very great interest in the medical library, uh, the library began to build up and flourish. Well, this library, our medical school library, is known as the Archibald Church Library. Who was Archibald Church, and how did that name become affixed to the library? Archibald Church was a famous neurologist, uh, psychologist and neurologist. Uh, and uh, when the things were beginning to boil up as to uh, facilities for the new school, the library was one that, and I think Dr. Cutter was again fostering that, making a point that the library should be built up and made something of. Uh, Dr. Church was then uh, retired, just retired, not, not long before, and he uh, said, he proposed that he would give $100,000 on an annuity basis uh, for the library, and so it was called the Church Library. Later on, uh, he gave he um, and Mrs. Church gave another hundred thousand dollars or so. But in the meantime, they were both long lived, and uh, quite a bit of the original hundred thousand had been eaten up. As a matter of fact, I think the actual residue of that first. 100,000 when they both died was only 23,000 or something like that. But there was another 100,000 given, plus I think some more in the estate. And so uh, the, uh, the name was fitting. He came and filled in a need at a time of a great need. Well, you've mentioned one other thing about Cutter that I believe I've heard. Um, is it true that he probably did more to enhance this rather remarkable historical collection of books oh, that we have in this library? Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it. When we came here, there was 
you can say there was absolutely nothing in the way of a historical book. As a matter of fact, on one or two occasions, and I remember one in particular, in particular toward the end of our stay at the old location, where the library had been thinned out by putting out on, on uh, uh, tables books, and the, among those were rare books that were just put out there, anybody would take them away. Um, uh, I, and I know that one or two of them that were somebody picked off early were returned as this, these are really too valuable. But we had nothing at all. Now, when Cutter first came, he, uh, one, his, one of his earliest goals was to build up the library. Our library at that time consisted of the, there's a difference in opinion, but let us say 14,000 books. As opposed to about 300,000 yeah, now, I guess. Yeah, about 14,000 books. And uh, Carter immediately got in contact with all kinds of sources to have books come here. Uh, agents in Europe sent shipments. Uh, he found where there were uh, stored books from old uh, uh, medical schools that had died during the ages, uh, during the period prior. And those came pouring in. A lot of them were, you know, there were many of them were just old, outmoded textbooks and so on, but other ones were in there. But he, he brought them all in. And he had the, uh, these agents for, oh, year after year, uh, sending from uh, Europe, uh, then, all the things which were of value, could be of value, uh, historically. And uh, little by little, he built up the collection that we have here. And after Cutter left, there's been nothing added, really. The public really uh, doesn't enough. know, the medical public doesn't know how valuable our historical collection no, is. Quite true. And it hasn't been added to substantially. It is not really publicized because it is in bad need of renovation right. and new quarters. One of the things we had hoped to do in the period I was dean was to get a donor that would agree to that sort of thing. We thought we had one once, but we've still got to keep on working because it is a remarkable collection.